Hello and welcome to my first chemistry video. Someone asked me if I could do a bit of um, chemistry for them, so I said why not. Um, today we'll be doing analytical chemistry. This can usually come up in, well this will come up in the exam, usually a big question as you'll see at the end. So three parts to it. Empirical formula, you've probably done this in unit one, but I will go over it anyway. Empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. That's all it is, and this is how you work it out. I'll do a step-by-step -step guide. So here's a question. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen in those abundances. Ca um, carbon, 70.59%. Hydrogen, 13.72%. Oxygen, 15.69%. Now what you do is you treat the percentages as, as grams. So it's 70.59 grams, 13.72 grams, 15.69 grams. And then what you do, set it out in columns, make sure it's very clear, you know, which one's which. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nicely spread out. And what you do is you work out the number of moles. Moles is mass divided by MR. So carbon, we've got the mass divided by the MR12, hydrogen by 1, oxygen by 16. Then the top number, so 5.8. 8825, 13.72 and 0.9806, those are the moles of each carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Now what you do is you divide all the moles by the smallest number of moles. So in this case, oxygen has the least number of moles, 0.9806. So you divide them all together. So 5.8825 divided by 0.9 about 6, it's, I think it's probably about 5.99, but you round it to 6, 13.72 divided by 0 0.9806, 14, and obviously 0 0.9806 divided by itself is 1, and you get this formula, C6H14O. Now, it's very important, if you get, let's say, carbon was actually 5.5, .5, you then need to double everything so you get a whole number, no decimals, it's a whole number ratio, and that's how you do empirical formula, very simple. Infrared spectroscopy. Infrared radiation is passed through a sample. The covalent bonds will, in that sample will then absorb the infrared radiation and gain more energy to vibrate. Then we can analyse the spectrum, the absorbed spectrum, and we can see peaks in different areas and we can determine what the different bonds are. Now, the amount of vibration depends on bond strength, bond length, and the mass of each atom. And most most um, bonds vibrate in a frequency between 300 and 4,000 cm minus one. That's the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So different bonds and bonds at different places absorb more infrared radiation. So, for example, carboxylic acids have an OH group, but so do alcohols. But they're at different places, and that's how you can determine different ones. And here's an example. Now this one is propanone, so that is must be a ketone. And I've just outlined a few key points. Now you might be going, right, how can I actually um, know what this what this mess means? Well, in your data sheet you get, you'll get at the back page a list of different bonds, location, and the wave number. And that's what you do. So you look at peaks. Now, I know there are a few peaks before number one, but we ignore them because very rarely are they actually any any importance. Occasionally they'll be found in alcohols, esters, and carboxylic acids. But in this case, we don't we just don't take importance in them because they're actually above 1,300 and below 1,640, which is what we're interested in. So if you look at about 1,700, you have a peak. Now you look on your sheet, um, I will have a picture of that up in a minute. Um, you look at your sheet and you'll notice that at 1640 to 1750, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids and esters. Now the only, the only one that is a ketone is in that section. So we can guess that it is a ketone plus we know it's propanone. And also at 2, that is at about 3100, which is a CH bond. Here is the here is the sheet. So as you can see, 
the bonds C O C double O C H O H N H and O H again, but for different types of compounds, each had their own wave number. And that's all that infrared spectroscopy is. Now sometimes you'll be given the wave number as an actual number, sometimes you'll be given the graph. An example I will do later, you'll get both. Mass spectrometry. Right, so a molecule is bombarded with electrons, an electron is then knocked off and it's and the molecules ionized forms an M plus ion. This is pentane and it becomes pentane with a little plus. Then what can happen is that fragment ions can form. This happens when excess energy can fragmentize the ions. Then all these ions are shot into a mass analyzer and a graph like this comes up. Now the important points, the one you always look for is the one furthest to the right. In this case number one, that's 72. That is the M plus peak. That is basically the MR of the compound. Then all the other peaks here, 57, 43, 29, are fragment iron peaks. And this is where you have to kind of do a little bit of, not guess, but you have to use your brain a little bit. So 72 minus 57 equals 15. That means a mass of 15 has been knocked off. So the fragment ion is 15 mass less than the whole ion. So you now look at pentane and go what is 15? So it'll be knocked off from either one side. So both sides have CH3. CH3 is 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 15. So you can get up to the fragment ion is CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2 plus. At 43, now that is 14 less, 12 plus 2. So another a CH2 has been knocked off, and at 29, the same. So that's roughly how it works. So uses of infrared spectroscopy. You can identify organic molecules and also it can be used to determine if a driver is drunk. In a, if you have a breathalyzer test, if you're over the limit, you'll be taken back to the station and that's where they will do an infrared spectroscopy test on, on you. What happens is the amount of ethanol vapor in the driver's breath is found by measuring the intensity of the peak on the infrared spectroscopy scale of the CH bond. Because if there's more CH bond, that means you have more ethanol vapor. But it will also you will have a OH group corresponding to an alcohol as well. So that's how you determine. Why this is good? Because water vapor doesn't affect it. So that's what infrared spectroscopy is used for. Mass spectrometry can differentiate between similar molecules. So if you have something, if you have, let's say, um, isotopes. You can then work out the shape of the molecule by working out the fragmented ions. You can also analyze molecules in space. It's used for detecting toxic chemicals. So a few uses there. Now, quite quickly onto a question. I, I find the best way to do this is actually just practicing it. So, compound X and compound Y react together to make an ester Z. Now, if you don't know what an ester is, that doesn't matter too much, there's only one mark on this question. This is more about the rest of the stuff beforehand. Samples of X and Y were analysed by a research chemist. A summary of the chemist's results is shown below. Just a comment, S is made between a carboxylic acid and alcohol. So we'd expect X and Y to be, one of them to be a carboxylic acid, one to be an alcohol. So, first we'll do an analysis of compound X. This is the stuff we have. Absorption at 1720 CM-1 and broad absorption between 2500 and 3300 CM-1. Percentage composition by mass, C 48.65, H 8.11, O 43.24. Mass spectrometry, molecular iron peak at M divided by Z equals 74. That's mass divided by charge. So, what do we know? Before I actually show you the answers, because I'm not going to give you a pause, I'll just show you the answers. We know that the mass of this molecule is 74. We know some of the some of the bonds, and we've also got a way of determining the empirical formula. 
So what I always do first is empirical formula. This is what you do. So we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Work out the number of moles. Divide the smallest mole by itself. See here we've got 1.53 and 1. Double it. 362. That's C3H6O2 is the empirical formula. Now, the mass of C3H6O2 is 74. We know that the mass of the molecule we're looking at is 74. So we know the molecule is C3H6O2. Next, the infrared spectrum. There's a peak at 1720, which indicates a C double O bond, which can be many molecules. But it's also broad at 2500 to 3300. And that indicates an OH group of a carboxylic acid. So we can assume this is a carboxylic acid. And when we draw the molecule, three carbons, two oxygens, six hydrogens. So it fits perfectly. So we can guess that this is propanoic acid. For compound Y, we can now guess it's an alcohol, but just to prove that, infrared spectrum, there's a massive peak, 3200 to 3550, which indicates an OH of an alcohol, and there's also one at 1000 to 1300, which is CO of an alcohol as well. And this mass has an M plus peak at 46, and it's got another one at 31, and another quite big one at 29, and another one at 15. These are just some of them. But we can work out so 46 is the mass now at 31 we have lost 15 a ch3 group at 29 we have lost 17 which is o 16 plus h1 so we've lost an oh group so we can guess that one side of the molecule has a ch3 the other has an oh and at 15 we have lost 31 and that is the same as CH2OH. Lost. So we've now worked out that there are two carbons and OHs, ethanol. And then for those who know about esters, Z, we have propanoic acid and ethanol, which becomes ethyl from the alcohol, propanoate, propanoic acid. You don't need to draw the molecule by drawing it anyway. And then that is it. That's all you need to know about analytical chemistry that's all that will come up on it if you're unlucky you'll get some questions on the uses but it's generally you'll get mass spectrum infrared spectrum and probably percentage composition by mass and then you can add it all together and you'll be able to find our molecule and that's it so yeah i hope that helped any chemists if you want any more chemistry videos just ask i prefer to do biology ones so i'm more happy with chemistry or maths that's just fine but yeah if this helped, please re leave a like, subscribe, blah de blah de blah. Yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.